Hello everyone, I'm Clarissa Rios Rojas from the Center for the Study of Existential Risk at the University of Cambridge. And today I'm doing a presentation for all of you. So I'm quite excited. So let's try to imagine some future scenarios just for some minutes. Let's imagine that is 2056 and computing infrastructure, research on artificial intelligence, machine learning are booming. Humans have been able to create an artificial intelligence that is not only equal, but has far exceeded human capabilities in most domains. Unfortunately for us, this AI was not aligned to human values. And this resulted in a super intelligence uh, AI that has depleted our water resources and we are not able to stop it. So hold on with that thought for some second. And let's go to 2039. We have entered the era of bioterror, where vir viruses are being created and engineered in laboratories, and the two most powerful nation nations are at the brink of a bio cold war. Let's go now to 2027. And now, in the same way as Tonga, which was a volcano that didn't have much monitoring equipment and we couldn't prepare or predict the eruption in 2022, we were not able to predict Clarisuvius in 2027. This supervolcanic eruption has thrown tons of dust and sulfates into the atmosphere, causing a global cooling of five degrees Celsius for several years. That means that the crops have been depleted and that has led to the devastating loss of plants and animal life. Humans are migrating from different countries to other countries from the global south to the global north, trying to find new areas where they can still do some agricultural activities. So these events that I'm talking about are events known as global catastrophic risks, which are events with low probability, but with high impact and can bring humanity to collapse. And global catastrophic risks are usually defined as a loss of 10% of the population. And existential risk will be a terminology that is used for events where global catastrophic risks were not mitigated, neither prevented, and brought humanity to a point that cannot recover. So what I want you to think for some seconds is, if you will be a citizen from the year 27, 2027, 2039, 2056, how would you feel if you are reading this newspaper right, right there? Like, would you think, what's my role to mitigate these events? Or perhaps you think that you don't have a role, that you are not part of the solution. But if you are not part of the solution, who is part of the dream team that is gonna come up to a solution to all these catastrophic events? Will it be the government? Will it be international organizations like the UN, Disaster Risk Reduction Office? Will it be the academics or the industry or maybe citizens as in NGOs? Who would you like to take leadership in that moment when you are having these events collapsing and breaking into different parts of the world? Well, luckily for us, we are in 2022 and we are still in time to ask how we can prevent and not mitigate this type of events. So that is exactly what I would like to discuss with you and tell you what we are doing about it. The question that we have at our center, which is by the way, uh, at the University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom is how do we tackle the global governance of these type of events? How do we do it? So at our core and based on our experience, we are really betting for the science policy interface. So this is our, the idea that we want to promote, the initiative that we want to keep pushing, not only to be created in our center, but beyond us. And do, you may be wondering, what is a science policy interface? So that will be creating a group of experts, a community, a network that is, com uh, that is shaped by academics that work on global catastrophic risk and that are interested in policy, putting them together with policy brokers that are interest interested on this type of future risk 
or like frontier risk as some others also call it. And by putting them together, what we are hoping is that we are gonna build bridges of trust. And that means that both parts are going to understand what are the differences in time? How much time does it take to make a research paper on this, on, on extreme consequences of climate, uh, climate change, for example? And then uh, academics are also going to understand how long do I, do I have in order to bring a policy recommendation to a policymaker that needs to take a decision yesterday, no? <laughs> in a week, in a month or maybe in the next 24 hours. So we want to create dialogue so both groups can understand their limitations, their methods, their challenges, their needs, but also their opportunities. So far, we have a compromise, uh, we, sorry, so far we have uh, bring together uh, these two groups, academics and policy brokers with different expertise. As you can see in the table, we have people, experts that know a lot of bio risk, natural risk, policy in global governance, financial risk, communication of risk, government science advice, among others. And from our policy brokers, we have a lot of expertise about different regions, Latin American, African, Asian region, disarmament and peace research. Again, government science advice, financial development, security policy, nuclear risk. So by putting these two groups together, we are not all we are not only putting expertise together, but we are also putting organizations together that perhaps were not working together before. And as you can see in this table, we have gathered some groups from different parts of the, of the world, and that will be Latin America, North America, Afri Africa, Asia, Europe. And in terms of policy brokers, we are uh, aiming to, to bring together international organizations that have a lot of experience of that. Of course, the UNDRR, the Asian Disaster Preparedness, Preparedness Center in the Asian region, the International Science Council, the Nuclear Threat Initiative, among others. And the aim that we have is to create an established mechanism to co-create policies but also research that can contribute to tackle the global governance of this type of events, the global catastrophic risk. We have done workshops, we have monthly meetings, we have sometimes invited the speakers from today, for example, we had a group, a monthly meeting that was with the Biological Weapon Convention, and we were trying to advise in terms of the science and technology mechanism that they are promoting among the state parties. And among other initiatives that we are running at the moment. So in the same way that you understand what the policy community needs, they need to understand what you can provide to them. And that's what we say to our, to our members, rather for the academics and also for the policy group. And the group mission, of course, is to build an expert network that is capable of effectively working together in a resilient way, and that that work can support the global governance of GCRs by the use of scientific evidence and diplomacy. And of course, uh, we are looking for you. And something that we are having in high demand right now is to have more academics that are from the social sciences and also more experts coming from the global south and also more partners from the UN, from the UN offices that are working on these topics, more industry partners, more civil society partners that are interested on this type of events please come to us and bring your expertise, your organizations and your brain, and we will uh, work together with the same passion that we are always working. And of course, this presentation is just for you to invite you to join our work. And I can tell you more about that after the presentation, you, you meet me uh, separately. And just to remind, to remind to you that if you join us together, we can prevent global catastrophic risk instead of mitigating them. As, it's, as it is illustrated in this newspaper from the future. We are on time, so please join us. Thank you.